are here at the first BST podcast at El Paso County Raceway at Mike Hathaway's trade show. Mike, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So this is the third annual, correct? Yes, it is. All right, and you know, there's definitely some booths going on. Unfortunately, I think this weather has hurt it a little bit as it has every year. Uh, we, we were talking earlier, you're the, the definitely the snow god. Whenever you put something on, it definitely wants to snow on us for sure. That is true. Uh, you know, the Indians say they can predict rain. I can predict a snowstorm <laughs> once a year in Calhan when I do my trade shows. There so. you go. There you go. All right. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're doing this. Uh, I'm pretty excited for the racing season. How about yourself? Very excited. Um, we've, we've got a, a lot going on, I think, and I think uh, it should be a good season at Calhan and all the surrounding racetracks. I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk about all the scheduling here in, in a little bit, but I know we've been working hard in the off season with the alliance that we have with I-76, my uncle, of course, Phillips County, El Paso County, making all those tracks working together, you know, basically when one's racing, the other is not, Sure. Uh, and then making the, the nights the best they can. I know here at El Paso, um, we've got 12 events scheduled. Yeah, the first one's in first or the end of April, and then goes into the first weekend of October. But yep. throughout that, basically, we're back on the second and fourth Saturdays, uh, rotating with I-76 on the first and thirds, of course. So pretty much all the Saturdays are, are booked with I-76 in El Paso. But all 12 of those events are. They're going to be spectacular events. Uh, I'm really excited about the sprint cars. You want to talk a little bit about those? Um, yeah, we um, we've got a lot going on. We um, we partnered up with ASCS, the National Sprint Car Tour, um, to team up with the uh, Elite Series. So now it's called the ASCS Elite North Sprint Car Series, and that brought in a big points fund uh, for the drivers. Uh, brought in a lot of notoriety and. Uh, I know we were talking about 2000 in the beginning, but aren't we up to like 7000 now? We're up to $7,500 $7, uh, in the points fund. Um, that'll be distributed amongst the top 10 drivers in points. So it's uh, it, we're trying to make the effort to make sure we have good car counts every night. So the points fund is where the focus is at right now. You know, that uh, kind of reminds me of the old school days. Uh, you know, it seems like point funds became... I don't know, forgotten about. Kind of non-existent. Yeah, yeah. you know, over yeah. The, almost the last 20 years. So I'm yep. excited to see what that does. And then we could even maybe do some trickle down with the other divisions or some of the other tours that we have. We'll talk about those yep. as well. But I'm excited to see what that actually does and if it helps. And, and obviously, the deal about the point fund, it'll keep them coming back again to the Correct. next race. So Correct. many racers nowadays just race here, there, whenever they can yep. because they probably didn't have a reason you know, and this gives them that reason yeah, to gives keep them, them coming back to the next event. Yeah, it gives them a lot of incentive to, to keep going to the races. So we've got a lot of guys talking about, you know, building spare motors and carrying a lot of spare parts because we have we have a few two day shows on our schedule. Um, we have one at, just at the end of May. Um, so that's going to be a big test for these guys. If they tear something up on the first night, they've got to get their stuff back together for the next night. If they are going to chase those that points it, funds. So. Exactly. And, uh, you know, it's no secret we've kind of been struggling with sprint cars over the years here in Colorado sure but I can honestly say for the first time starting last year I seen a little light at the end of the tunnel and, yep. and I think it has a lot to do obviously I've been a wingless fan <laughs> but it, it it's not so much the wingless part that's bringing it as the motor option of running what yep. you brung pretty much yeah. you can run anything it's... from an injected motor to a carbureted motor to a v6 to 454 i guess if you really want it you want to put a, it. you want to put a supercharger on it have that if you can make it fit you think you can put it to the ground go for it that's you know, the key and you look around the country i mean for the most part i would imagine it seems like they're still running the injected 305s to 410s but mm -hmm. you see some carbureted ones out there yep. i know talking to casey schumann uh, last year uh, you know he had a variety of cars winning are you still seeing you know the equality with the carbureted cars as well as the injected cars or whatever oh, yeah. it may be. Yeah, definitely. I mean, last year in our races that we ran, we had everything from a 410 to a 360. 
win, and then we had 305s win. Yeah. Um, I think it all depends on the track conditions um, and the tracks. I mean, obviously, when we go to Phillips County, yep. uh, the horsepower motors are probably going to come into play a little bit more. Cr cream right, might rise more to the top true, there than true. does at 76 or El Paso. But I think what we look at right now is I think on a given bait, on a given race, um, if you have about 500, 550 horsepower, you're going to be in the top five. Yeah. Um, you know, there's motors that make a lot of power, but you and, just can't put it down. And essentially, it's because of taking the wing off. That's the great equalizer. By taking that wing off without that downforce, it's literally impossible to hook up that motor it is. and that horsepower. So at that rate, sometimes the littler motors might have an advantage on the dry slick stuff. I think they definitely do. I mean, the last two races of the season here at Calham, 305s won those races based on the fact that the, the big motors just were spinning yeah. the tires. Yeah, you can't hook it up. Yep, they made a lot of noise. They just couldn't get anywhere. So, so the million-dollar question. Uh, I've seen sprint car racing in Colorado with two cars. My, I think you were one of them that came out with the <laughs> yeah. two-car show yeah. that we had that we struggled with yes, compared sir. to where we're at now. Give me your honest guess of how many cars are going to be at this first show. I would uh, be honest and say I think 15 is going to be in a, a small, that'll be our smallest number possible. Yep. I mean, I, we kind of feel confident that 18 to 20 is going to be our number, but uh, See, I'm going to say confidently we're 15. Shooting for 18 to 20 to be the average common? Yep, yep. I, th I think we can do it. I mean, I know the people that I've talked to, and then... The way the ASCS and, and even the, the War Series, the, there's, I mean, a number of racetracks looking at this style of racing, yeah. whether you're ASCS, Power Eye, or even non-sanctioned. I think the non-wing sprint car racing is definitely making a comeback. And that being said, I'm getting calls from all over, from Arizona to Wyoming. Sure. And then there's guys that have can't run a wing show because there's not too many of them. And they're saying, well, just take our wings off and come play. So yep, yeah. that's the beauty of that. Obviously, yep. you can have a wing sprint car, just take the wing off and go yep. and still be just as competitive. Yeah, you don't need a, a non-wing specific type car. I mean, I, there might be some advantages here and there, but I mean, for the most part, these guys are running their wing cars, they're taking the wings off and coming and racing and, and enjoying it. Yep. it. They are a lot harder to drive without the wing. Um, they, they take some, some effort. And I'll just be honest, that's, I've been in both. Uh, my mm -hmm. sprint car career obviously was not that long. <laughs> it was brief. Pro pro probably a good thing. <laughs> I, I'm still here. Uh, not that I don't want to get back into it, but yeah. I know for a fact when, when I was running them, uh, the, the wing was fun, but it has so much downforce that it took the driving element out of it. And, yep. and then what I seen was happening was those guys with those big power plants or maybe a little bit more money than the other guy i mean it was just hard to compete with those it was. guys it was. and i don't care how hard you drove but yep. everybody was so planted yep. that it just made it next impossible to out doll or out race those dollar guys yes it was so then yep. when we did take the wings off i was like oh yeah now we're back racing it and yep. the guy's got to realize he's got to let off or he he knows how hard he's got to drive in, in the corner yep. uh gives you a little fear factor back into the game yep and puts the driver back into the race, yeah, in my very, opinion. Very you, much so, I agree. You, you agree? Yep. I mean, and that's, uh, so wingless or, or wing, I like sprint car racing. I like all types of racing, but that is the one deal about the wingless racing that with sprint cars that I've always liked is just because it really does put the driver back yep. into it. Yep, it is. It's awesome. So we've got, what, 12 races? We have 12 races scheduled here in Colorado, uh, six here at El Paso County. Uh, two at Phillips County and the rest up at uh, I-76 in Fort Morgan. And both Phillips counties go from a Friday night there to a Saturday night at yep. I-76, yep. so making those double headers. And as you said, we have that early double header from El Paso here on a Saturday to a Sunday. Up there. Uh, yeah. Yep. So oh, that'll yeah. be that'll be good. So the weekends, uh, you know, with uh, all those double headers and, and then the other races allows the drivers to do some other things. Of course. Yep. I know we've. We've got some people here saying they're running midgets and sprint cars and other yep. things. So that that's the yep. other thing that I like about the schedule that we put together. It's yep. not too demanding, but I think it's going to be good enough to build on this year to where yeah. you know next year. It we gives it gives the the guys with families some time. They got some weekends off. They're not running every single weekend through the summer. They get some time off to go to the lake or do whatever they want to do. Um, so yeah, I think most everybody's real excited about how the schedule came out. Nice. So. All right, Mike, I want to thank you for coming by the booth. I want to thank sure. you for putting on this show. Uh, one Somehow, some way, we're going to get this thing filled up. <laughs> I, I think, you know, let's see, three years in a row. I think 
next year, the fourth year, watch. It's going to be sunny and beautiful. It's bound to be, right? <laughs> Vegas, sure Vegas so. odds say so, at least. I, we almost had it. We <laughs> yeah. almost had it. It's no, sunny today, but no it just, yesterday was a trade show. Is five dollars to get in, and yes. then uh, essentially it's going to run till noon or probably uh, two we'll o'clock. Probably we advertise four, but we'll probably most of the time they shut two down around four, two to four. Yeah, two or three o'clock. So, so two to four. So plenty yeah. of time. Yeah. All yeah. right. Right on. Well, thanks for coming, and sure. uh, we're really, really, really excited about next year or this year, I should say. Yes, we are. Which is right around the corner, by the way. Yes, it is. A month away. All right. Thanks again. You bet. Thank you. All right.